Good evening, sports fans. Welcome to Foxborough High School for tonight's Hockamock League matchup between the Foxborough Warriors and the King Philip Warriors. I'm Brady Gardner alongside Chad Burst. Thanks for joining us. Hi, guys. Foxborough's coming in this game tied for first in the Davenport Division with Sharon. Their record is 8-3 and three in the Hockamock League, 11-3 and three overall. This is going to be their third game in the last four days. Definitely going to be a test conditioning-wise for these Warriors. For sure. On Friday, they lost to Sharon by a... Th by a Three-point field goal, 49-46. to 46. Last second it was definitely a devastating win. Uh, last yesterday against Bridgewater Raynham, a D1 top-tier team, they beat them 65-53 to 53 at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Those last two games, they struggled from the free-throw line. Against Sharon, at one point, they were 2-for-8. Not a very good, good uh, free-throw line game. King Philip, on the other hand, tied for fourth in the Kelly Rex division at four and seven. Last week they beat Away 62 to 57. Away not the strongest of teams, and they lost to Taunton 62 to 54. That game, King Philip was leading for the first three quarters. Taunton, one of the stronger teams in the Hawkmont League this year, so that that might show something. Maybe King Philip is starting to turn their season around. Yeah, definitely. For the pregame announcement, here's address announcer uh, Al Sozio. Five foot eleven inch. Number zero. Correction. Number three. Taylor Davis. Six foot three inch. Junior number twelve. Noah Goodwin. Six foot one inch. Senior number thirteen. Ben Smith. Six foot three inch freshman number 34, Kyle Lehman. Six foot two inch junior number 35, Will Weir. Now the sign lines to the Warriors of Foxborough. Head job is six foot two inch senior number 12, Jason Pogacini. Head job is five foot two inch senior number 13, Captain Ellis Dupo. We've got a six foot three and senior number 20, Captain Jonathan Carnell. We've got a five foot ten and senior number 33, Mark Clay. And four, the six foot four and senior number 35, Captain Rob Lowy. And you might have heard in the KP lineups, uh, freshman Kyle Lehman. You did not hear that incorrectly, freshman. Yeah, he's a big story. We'll see a lot of him here tonight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem. Be his son, by Foxborough senior Colleen McDonald. Uh, going off of the free throws that Foxborough has been struggling with this past uh, four days, Gibbs said, Coach John Gibbs, 
once we see the ball, once we saw the ball start going in again, we were able to make some key ones down the stretch. We made them when we needed to. This was after the Bridgewater Raynham game. In that game, they finished with 17 from 29 from the line, which still isn't outstanding. It probably should be higher, but it's an improvement from the Sharon game. Hope we'll see if uh, Foxborough is taking the time out to improve on that. Right, confidence and momentum, a big thing about basketball, definitely in free throws. So just about to get underway here. Lehman, the freshman, and Lowy, the senior, matching up for the jump ball here. It's up. Foxborough wins it. Dubro has the ball. Going to get it to Carnino. Carnino looks for Procaccini. Loses possession a little bit, but finds it. Dubro gets it to Lowy on the block. Bodies up with his man. Finds Clagg out the three-point line and travels. Not a bad first possession with the Foxborough Warriors, although it didn't result in points. Moved the ball around well. Yep. Making think, the King Philip defense work. I think one thing the Foxborough Warriors have to do tonight is establish a solid presence uh, on the blocks. Because when you look at the lineups, Fo uh, Shan King Philip rather just doesn't have the size that Foxborough does. Here's Farrow Davis with the ball. Give it up. Now it's over. Will Weir. He'll find Noah Goodwin. Can't get the three to go. And it'll be rebounded. Actually, Lowy tapped it out of bounds. He was trying to get it over to Dubrow. Had the idea, just Lehman putting pressure on him. Wasn't able to keep it in bounds. Lehman to inbound. Back to Davis. He'll go over. And that's a three from senior Ben Smith. Captain gets his team on the board. First basket of tonight's game. As you look at the uh, King Philip defense, they're definitely doing a man to man. Clag for three. In and out. Carnino almost gets a rebound, but King Philip will control it. Drive along the baseline. Gets blocked by a combination of Carnino and Lowy. Dubra breaks. Procaccini's going to slow it down. Gets a pick from Lowy. Floater in the lane, two for Procaccini. Procaccini has just been improving game after game for these Foxborough Warriors. Coming in a transfer from Nobles, wasn't really, hadn't really proven himself, um, and he's just, he's blown it out of the water pretty much. Definitely, he's really come into Foxborough's system well. He's made a huge difference for this team. Foul will be called there. And Cardino will head to the line. Foxborough trailing 3-2 to in the opening minutes here. Carnino not the um, not the strongest player of players on, on the Foxborough roster, but he, he gets in there and he gets his points every game. Here's Procaccini's basket. Goes around the pick from Lowy. Just floats it up over number 12. Noah Goodwin. Wonderful play. Carnino gets his second free throw to go. It's all knotted up at three. Davis will take it up. Goes to Goodwin. He'll look back to Davis. Dubrow on him. The three did not go. Yeah, Dubrow will head the other way. Both teams using the man-to-man uh, -man defense so far this game. Carnino has it. Clagg matching up. Tries to find a slashing Procaccini. Ball bounces around, finds it its way to Lowy. Lowy with a wonderful move, just unable to go in. Comes down with it, and they're going to call a jump ball. Wonderful hustle play by Rob Lowy. The possession was in King Phillips' favor, but nonetheless, wonderful play. Yeah, Lowy, great hands there, not only to get the loose ball, but then to keep following his rebounds after the shot attempt. Good work from the big man. Davis with... Dubrow in pursuit. He'll find Lehman for three. Lowy all over him. You might recognize that uh, Lehman name. You might know Kyle Lehman, a player for the. Oh, no, not Kyle Lehman. Don't remember his first name, but Lehman plays for Maryland, uh, number eight team in the nation so far. He was a wonderful basketball player when he was here. I'm going to think about his name. I'll get it. Dubrow 
with the quick outlet pass for Clagg. Slipped out of his hands, though. It'll be King Philip off. Just under five minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Not, a, uh, not the fastest of games so far. Neither team really been able to get a handhold so far. Both teams just kind of feeling each other out. An interesting matchup uh, when Lowy is guarding Lehman. Lehman more of an outside threat than an inside threat. Don't know exactly what Coach Gibbs is thinking on that one, but he knows more than we do, so. <laughs> well, Lehman, tall guy, long arms. He's pretty good at shooting it over the defenders, so when people put point guards on him, he can get it over them for the threes, have an open look, but with a big lowy right on him, it'll be a little tougher to get those shots off. Dubro going up with it. Davis in coverage. He'll float it in for Lowy. Lowy will go across to Clagg, great vision. And Clagg will get fouled for the three by Lehman. Lehman didn't agree with it, but Clagg will head to the line for three shots. I think that's the second uh, three-point shot attempted by Mark Clagg. It's definitely um, not shying away so far. I had a feeling this game was gonna be kind of slow. Fox for his third game in four days. They're, they're not gonna come out of the gates sprinting, you know what I mean? Right. Misses the first one. Makes it, rather. I say it's a slow game. That's pretty much exactly Foxborough's game plan. They've got the lowest opponent's points per game in the Davenport division at only 49.4 uh, points given up each game to their opposition. So Foxborough likes the defensive battles. They're confident. Three for three from the uh, free throw line for Mark Flagg. That's an improvement over what they have had the last two, two games. Definitely. Lehman, Lowy getting out there. Flag. Very good defense on number 22. Seth Sullivan. Seth Sullivan. A little too much space there for Lehman. He's able to find his way into the paint, get a nice floater to go. I think the two matchups that are going to really make this game what it is is Lowy on Lehman on defense and Dubro on Davis on Dubro, rather, on offense. I think if Dubro can find some space, He's just gonna take over this game. Yeah. Here he is. Wonderful pass to a, oops, to a slash and Carnino along the baseline. Finds his way to Dubro. Finds Procaccini. Gonna be a shot clock violation. Sel Sullivan almost lost it. Then he loses it. Dubro will take it right off of him. Davis is there, but Dubro will go in for the uncontested layup. Good play by Alex Dubro for the steal on the score. Eight to five Foxborough in the first quarter. Three minutes left. Unorthodox three-pointer from Will Weir. Will Weir. But uh, it doesn't count. Dubro's just gonna go all the way. Thought he might have gotten fouled, but refs didn't see it. Flag's just gonna get right out on Davis, then Dubro's gonna follow. Davis trying to set up the offense. Lehman has it on three-point line, drives on Lowy along the baseline. Find, who kicks it to Weir, finds Davis. Gonna be a jump ball. Don't know if I agree with that one. He's quick to call these jump balls this game. We saw one down low where Lowy seemed to have control of it, but they called a jump ball on that one, and there it is again. But it works in Foxborough's favor as they'll take the ball underneath. Morrison and Block are gonna come into this game for Carnino and Clagg. Those two definitely are, are the sixth men, both of them. They come into the game at the same time every game. Ooh, Dubro finds space in and out. Halfway down, doesn't count though. Davis finds some space, drives on Morrison, who looked like he lost his balance, but doesn't take advantage. Here's Lehman, Dubro on Lehman, not a very good matchup. Morrison on Davis. Davis is gonna find Will Weir. Will Weir is gonna drive, finds Lowy's body. Lehman comes down with the rebound. Two points for Lehman. His long arms there getting up and then getting the rebound opportunity to go. Four points for the freshman so far. Joe Morrison, just a sophomore, as he has the ball now. Just a sophomore, but really a spark plug for this team. As if uh, this Foxborough team doesn't have enough spark plugs already, but he's done a great job for them coming off the bench. Yeah, after the BR game, Coach Sean Gibbs was quoted as saying, he's their glue man, just keeps them together. One play in particular that um, sets him apart in that DR, uh, BR game, rather, was with about 50 seconds left, he came in, got a rebound that really saved the game and called timeout. 
Dubrow steals it. Ooh, don't know if he's going to miss that one, but gets it nonetheless. A nice contested lefty layup with Matt LaHoulier right in his head. Here's Sullivan over to Goodwin. They'll go over to LaHoulier. He could get the shot to go. And Jermaine Few, who just came into the game, come over with the rebound. Procaccini lost it. They'll head the other way. LaHoulier again. He likes that spot. Jermaine Few on an unorthodox rebound off his knee. Not his fault. Actually, correction, 24 is Tom Madden, a sophomore, while 20 is LaHoulier. It's an interesting name, huh? LaHoulier. <laughs> Goodwin. Here he is. Over, yep. Oh, Dubrow read it all the way. Telegraph the pass. It's blocked there to finish it. Timeout will be called over there by King Phillip. Foxborough starting to get things going. They've got a 12 7 lead with just under a minute remaining in this first quarter. Things going the right way for John Gibbs' squad. There it is. Dubrow just palms it. Knew it was coming the whole way. Knew he had block. Bounce pass, beautiful bounce pass. Kids these days don't use that enough. Oh. Here it is. There's another one. Yeah, Alex just tips it out. Three steals takes already this game. Takes it the whole way. It's been a key factor for him. Julia got it taken from there again. He's having all sorts of troubles with Tubro on defense. So far, I'd say. Uh, successful game for the Warriors. Right. Seems like they've got their game plan to work. Pressure on defense and get the good opportunities on offense. They definitely know what they're coming in here to do. They come in here. They have a game plan, like you said. And um, they're going to try and succeed. Huddles disperse. KP to inbound. Lahoulier with it. Fox were still using the man-to-man uh, -man defense. No good one with it. Lahoulier finds Lehman on the block. Procaccini on defense, but Lehman gets it nonetheless. Freshman Kyle Lehman with six points so far. King Phillips is pretty confident with their bench. They've already gone deep into it here. Foxborough not so much. Still got three of their starters in. Dubrow has played the entire quarter so far. He could get his layup to go. And I would be good when heading the other way. Shot clock's off. I don't know what KP is doing right now exactly. They could have waited and held for the last shot, but they just gave Foxborough another opportunity to score two points. Dubrow will take it up. He's got 10 seconds to go. Foxborough bench is telling him. Air ball by Morrison. And Morrison knew he had to take it, but just put a little too much on it. KP got lucky there. They could have given up another two points or even rather three. Well, that'll wrap up the first quarter. 12-11 Foxborough. No personal fouls uh, for the Foxborough Warriors. That's very good. And uh, against BR, uh, Rob Lowy, he had three fouls quick, and he had to come out. And yeah. um, he really wasn't a factor in the game until he got back in. Yeah, foul trouble, a big part of it. Especially for a player as influential as Lowy is underneath. Yeah, on uh, Coach Gibbs on the Lowy foul trouble in the BR game. That takes away a huge dimension of our team. Even watching the game without him, you could tell they, they just didn't have as much of a presence down low. Jermaine Few, try, he, he does pretty good every once in a while. And... Um, but there's just a little something missing. Yep. I personally like to see Jermaine Few get a little bit more game time. A junior who's probably going to have to be the big man next year. And he uh, he's shown quite a bit. I'd like to see him and Lowy out there at one point. That'd be a formidable team. Mm -hmm. Procaccini will inbound it to Dubrow. Foxborough ahead, but just one point, 12-11. Here's Block over to Morrison. Lehman in coverage. We'll go to Dubro. Block will take the three. Had a hand in his face, couldn't get it to go. Lehman with the rebound. Lehman seems to be all over the court. 
So Sullivan taking it up. Find Goodwin. Go to Lehman. Gets the shot to go. Not the best angle, but push the swoosh. Nobody can shut down Lehman. Now they have few on him. I don't know what they're going to have to do to, to get, shut him down. Procaccini almost loses the ball there. Dubrow cross court pass to block. Block the three. Off the back rim. That's two missed for him. He's right around it, though. Yeah. Lehman again. Procaccini. Procaccini thinks he might have got a clean there, but they're going to say he got him. Yeah, it was close. Plasma just not able to get the threes to go. They've had their chances, but just can't convert. I think his hand got the ball, but I think his just trailing elbow might have might have constituted the foul. Yeah, coming in pretty fast. Let's see why the ref called it. Uh, Lehman rather misses the first one, misses the second one. Dubrow's gonna have it. Morrison finds few. Dubrow on the wing. Procaccini with some good ball movement. He likes his matchup. Dubrow doesn't give it to him. Few goes in on Goldman. Spen Smith rather. It's gonna be an and one. Two points for Jermaine Few. Here it is. Few gets a nice bounce pass from the block. Caught his way in a little bit. Had Defin this side's advantage. Definitely established the lower, bo lower center of gravity there. Ben Smith's just not able to keep up with him. With his one free throw attempt. Swish. Boxer's clearly been working on that in the past couple days. I have an update on the layman first name. His name is Jake. There we go. I can't believe I forgot that. Good one. Drives on Morrison. Not the prettiest of plays, but two points for good, uh, good one. Layman with 10 of KP's 15 points right now. If, if King Phillip's going to want to win this game, they're going to have to find another scoring threat. Rob Lowy comes in for Jermaine Few. Successful shift right there. Yep, did a good job replacing Lowy temporarily. Here's Procaccini down low. He's got Will Weir right on him. They call a travel against him. Just mind was faster than his feet there and moved him a little too quickly. Yeah, he was, he was clearing out uh, his his teammates, Dubrow and Morrison. He, he wanted that guy, but didn't uh, situation didn't arise. Lowy again getting trailing away from the center of the court. If I were him, I'd stay down low. Maybe have a switch or something. Goodwin gets the ball tipped but it'll find its way down to Will Weir. Smith, Weir, good one from long range. Two seconds on the shot clock, and he, uh, he had to take it. Yeah, nine out of 10 times. I'm not sure he's hitting that one, but he'll take it. The big man getting the unorthodox three to go. Here's Lowy, he'll try to do it himself, but then he ended up going over to block. Knocked out of bounds. Good idea there from Lowy, uh, uh, unlucky. Yeah, he knew somebody was going to be there, but they just didn't know they were supposed to be there. Here's the three. Two seconds. Just throws it up there. Just look at his reaction. Nice. He likes it. He likes it. Davis. Davis is going to set up the offense. Goes by Dubro. Miscommunication on KP. Goodwin tipped a ball that was meant for somebody else. Puts in two points again. It's the hot hand for King Phillip right now. Even with Lehman on the bench, they're maintaining a 20 to 15 lead with five minutes left in the quarter. That call will be on Ben Smith. Lehman coming back into the game, as well as Tom Madden. Foxborough with their starting line. Like I said earlier, it was gonna be, it was always gonna be a slow start for the Foxborough Warriors. Third game in four days, but hopefully they can switch it around. 
flag from deep for three. That's a confidence booster there for Mark. No doubt. Lowey's got it. Lowey is quick to get out to him. Yeah, Lowey's Lowy, got the rebound. Lowey with a clean block there. Procaccini has it. He has on Goodwin. Drives. Kicks it out to Dubro. Dubro fake pass to Carnino. Gonna get fouled. Now it's going in there with about four different King Philip defenders. At the start of the uh, uh, Dubro's run there, the KP bench was yelling and screaming for a travel. There's a foul. He does one of his one of his plays where he just goes all around and gets the foul. It's a win-win. Either you get fouled or you, you make the crazy shot. Or both. Around. Here he is. Carnino finds him. Deep. Two, three feet behind the line. No problem. He knew he was taking it as soon as he hit, got the ball. He was ready. Davis is going to drive. Finds Lehman. Lehman, two-point shot off the back rim. Flag's going to come down with it. Dubro wanted to start a fast break, but uh, Gibbs, rather, slows him down. Dubro goes around a defender. Miscommunication from him and Procaccini there. Yeah, Will Weir right between Procaccini and the ball. Not sure even if Procaccini uh, knew where Dubro had planned it for it to go. I'm not sure he'd been able to get there. There's Davis with it. All knotted up at 20-20. Over to Goodwin. We'll find Lehman. Needed it off. Now back to Goodwin. Big man spending a lot of time around the, uh, the three-point line. Davis will get fouled by Dubro. Dubro didn't like the call, but Farrell will head to the line. Interesting call there. Dubro didn't want it at all. No. Two free throws for Davis. Sets up. Off the back rim. No intensity in this gym right now. Fan section not really pumping life into the team like they usually do. And the game's kind of a slow game as well. Not, not too much action so far. Still a close game though, so it'll, be, it'll get interesting. Carnino with it. Procaccini. Lowy. Pick and roll. Procaccini can't find him. Procaccini's gonna go try and go around defender. Does. Clag again from three. For long. Looks good. Pound it. Mark with an extra second to settle himself there. Nail the shot. Clag with nine points so far. Three point play from getting fouled. Uh, not a three point play, rather. Three free throws from getting fouled beyond the arc. And two three point uh, uh, shots. He, uh, if I were him, I'd just stay out there. Yeah. Get deflected out of bounds. Davis was looking to go across the baseline. Here's that three-pointer. Procaccini drives. Sets a kind of a pick on good one. Finds Clag some room. Dubro on Davis. Davis. Weir. Lehman. Loses possession on an awkward pass. Procaccini's going to gain possession. Number 22, Seth Sullivan coming in for Goodwin. Goodwin had the hot hand for a while there, but uh, Coach Matt Coop must have seen something. Sullivan went straight to Clagg, so my guess is he wanted someone to stop him from taking those threes. It's Foxborough now ahead, 23 to 20. It's Procaccini, lost the handle on it little bit, but now he gets to, to Dubro. Nice little pass to Lowy. Lowy didn't look like he was ready for it. He thought Dubro was going up with it, but still able to get his hands under it, get the layup to go. Here's Davis, we'll go to Sullivan, Clag against him. Sullivan head middle. We'll get the deflection, we'll send it back to Will Weir. Gets a three, King Phillip Bigman. Able to shoot these threes as we found out. If you give anybody that amount of time, they should be able to put it down at the varsity level. Yeah. 
flag again. Has some room, takes it. Oh, off the side rim. He was feeling it. Life's get, uh, the game's getting a little bit of life now. 139 left. Fox World 25, KP 23. Fox World going on the fast break. Flag knows he doesn't have numbers, and he's going to slow it down. Carnino wants a cut, but Procaccini's going to drive on himself. Clag thought about it, but refrains. Lowy had a little bit of room. Clag for three. In and out, but Dubrow finds it. He has one now. Decides to pass to Clag, who drives along the baseline. Not what they drew, drew up, but it, it does the job. Dubrow has it now. Take uh, 18 seconds on the shot clock. Carnino for three. Fox Road definitely relying on the three point shot so far. Two points for Lowell. Great rebounding work there from the Warriors. Not one, but two second opportunities. They got the third chance to go. 40 seconds left, 27 Fox Road, 23 KP. Will Weir's gonna drive on Carnino. Pretty good move on Carnino right there. Somebody's definitely practiced a lot. 30 seconds left. About half a second between shot clock and game clock. Looks like Fox was going to manage the clock, so they wind it all the way down. Don't leave King Phillip with another opportunity before the half. Shot clock is pretty much off right now. There's like a .5 seconds difference. So they're just going to wait for the last shot. Four seconds. Flag likes it off the back rim. Will Weir's going to have a long one. Successful first half for the uh, Foxborough Warriors, 27-25. They've definitely had a game plan and they've they've executed so far. Yep, started off with Foxborough getting the uh, getting ahead early, but then King Phelps was able to come back with some uh, hot hands with both Kyle Lehman and uh, 12, Noah Goodwin. But Foxborough able to match it, and now they've got the lead going into the half. Lehman with 10, Goodwin with 7. All right, we'll see you then. Nice Kings between the Celtics and the Lakers. For the Lakers, number one, Jackson Driscoll. Number eight, Drew Cady. Number seven, Cameron Koku. Number 11, Nicholas Fiumaro. Number 10, Mario Musta. Number six, Liam Daly. Number four, Dan Christensen. And number five, Brian Alshon. For the Celtics, number one, Matthew Kennedy. Number two, Stephen Hurley. Number three, Wendy Pollard. Number four, Nick Walker. Number five, Jay Griffith. Number six, Nick Dunn. Number eight, Tim Sheehan. Number nine, John Hollis. Number ten, Dylan Keller. And number one, Raul Torres.
And welcome back to the second half here in Foxborough High School. Foxborough ahead of the King Philip Warriors, 27 to 25, halfway through the game. Foxborough definitely not as strong as they would have hoped coming into this uh, game. Third game in four days. Uh, they definitely need to improve. So uh, in the second half, right? Just put it blunt, bluntly. Here's no Goodwin. We'll go across to Lulier. That one will be intercepted by Procaccini. It was Will Weir trying to get it across. Procaccini takes it. We'll go to Clagg. Clagg goes up with it. And off the backboard and in for Mark Clagg. 11 points for Mark Clagg. Had a good game. Got his three ball to go late in the first half there. We'll see if he continues his success from behind the arc here in the second half. Foxborough definitely with a bigger sense of conviction so far in the second half. And that's definitely what they needed. The first half was kind of slow, just kind of drudging along, and they've really turned it on. Well, we're there with the chance for the and one. Good control to get the shot to go after being uh, fouled. And one. 29-28, Foxborough. Dubrow, go to Clag, and Procaccini. Uh, Dubrow again. Coach Gibbs calling a play. Here's Cardino. Back to Dubrow. He'll look to drive. Clag, Dubrow, good ball movement from the Warriors. Dubrow gets stuck inside. Almost tapped away. He'll have to take the shot with only two seconds on the shot clock. Didn't get it to go. Good possession good. from the Warriors, but just unable to get something out of it. Good defense there by Will Weir for KP. Steal by the Foxborough Warriors. Dubrow finds Carnino on the other side of the court. Lefty layup, unable to go. Still great vision from Alex Dubrow. Didn't even need to look up until he was already throwing it. He just knew Carnino would be there. Here's Goodwin, down low against Procaccini. Procaccini's got a hand in his face, couldn't get it to go. Goodwin tries to follow it, but it'll be a jump ball. Good move by, um, uh, not Lujulie, good win there. Able to go around Carnino, almost put it in. Unlucky. Dubrow's gonna go. Clegg to Procaccini. The KP coach wanted a call. I'm not sure exactly what he was call wanted, but he was very adamant. Cardino, Clagg, Dubrow. Back to Cardino. Faked pass. Go inside. Not the smartest to play by Dubrow. I knew what he was, I understand what he was doing, but just not a very smart play. Tried to slice the defenders in half. No good in, with the first opportunity. Couldn't get it to go though after the nice spin move. Foxborough can't allow the KP Warriors to get second chance opportunities. If um, Foxborough doesn't turn around, this could be not not a very good outcome. 30-29 KP. Clag. Bro, slashing from underneath the basket. We'll get it. And Carnino back to Dubro. Carnino again. Sorry to go for the quick shot, but it'll be a foul called. And he'll head to the line. Layman with the second. Carnino's going to have two. I haven't seen much of Layman here in the opening three minutes of the second half. Makes it. Carnino with the second point on the night. Layman's going to come out for number 24, Tom Madden. Layman, the freshman, definitely showing he belongs at this level. For sure. Big part of this King Philip team. Carnino with another. Solid trip to the free throw line. Like we said earlier in the game, Foxborough had had some trouble with from the free throw line in their past two games against Sharon and Bridgewater Raynham. They clearly have put some work in in the gym and they've, they've improved upon that. I haven't been keeping track, but I would say they they're maybe missed one or two.
Cardi doing tight, tight coverage there of Weir. Now it'll go to Madden. And Weir again. Gets rejected by Lowe and it'll tip back off of Weir. Out of bounds. Fox for ball. Wonderful block by Lowe. Able to stay in the air for seemed like a while and just able to swat it back at him. This game again. Sort of falling to a, a lull. Nothing really going on. And Fox Pro's winning by one, 31-30, but I, I would like to see them sort of turn it around a little bit. Well, Fox Pro is known to just have a simple game plan. You know, they don't try to be explosive. They just take their time, play calm basketball. It seems like King Phillips willing to do that as well. Dubro with a hustle play there to block him after he jumped on the first one and able to get back. Procaccini has it, sizing up his defender, drives. Wonderful move by Procaccini. Another floater in the lane. Able to blow right past his defender. Lahoulier with it. He's gonna set up the offense for KP. Timeout KP. Number 22, Seth Sullivan and Faro Davis, number three going to come into the game for the KP Warriors. Here it is. Sizes up the defender, goes one way, go, and uh, just throws it up. Yep. Wonderful move. Procciani doing a good job there, as he usually does of getting into the paint, even with multiple defenders on him, and getting the shot to go. Usually the Warriors have had have made a change by by this point in, the sec, in a quarter, four minutes in, but uh, starting lineup still out there. Yep. High scores for in this game, Clagg with 11, Lehman with 12, Goodwin with seven. And Will Weir for the KP Warriors with nine, eight rather, eight. Pretty long time out here. And uh, the, t the two huddles will break. 35-30, Foxborough Warriors. Now the team in foul trouble, which is good for the Warriors as uh, Rob Lowy was in serious foul trouble against Bridgewater Raynham yesterday morning at the Dunkin' Donut Center. Mark Clagg will guard the inbound play. Procaccini takes him out. Kyle Lehman still on the bench for King Philip. It's kind of surprising. They, you think they need a good uh, run here to get them back in this game. Soxbro leads by five, but looks like they'll be saving them. After Flag. that, Kingfield miss. Maybe Foxborough on offense. Dubro looks for Clagg. Almost like a fake pass, and Procaccini's going to find it. That, uh, that uh, he yelled Mark and faked a pass, and it, it drew the defenders towards him. And Procaccini was just cutting in the lane, and he found him. I think it might have see been that little, you couldn't really see it there, but he had a little fake pass, uh, pump fake, rather, which drew the defenders towards Clagg. Procaccini was able to find some room. Misses the free throw, though. Kind of looks like it was a drawn-up play there, I was going to say, for Fox Pro. Here's to Sullivan. Bounce away from him for a second, but he'll regain possession, get it to Weir. Then across to Madden. Davis. Madden. Here's Sullivan. Looks like Clagg had slipped a little bit, but Sullivan can't get the three to go. Procaccini splits the defenders. He's going to go all the way. Find wonderful pass to Carnino who throws it in. Great unselfish play from Jason Procaccini. Take it all the way, draw the defenders to him, and then give it to the open man. Foxborough starting to break away now. 39-30 with 2.50 left. KP's getting ready to make some substitutions. Kyle Lehman and number 12, Noah Goodwin, set to come into this game. Their two highest scores as of now. Meanwhile, Morrison and Block to come in for Carnino and Flag. We'll see if those two Foxborough substitutions can put some life into this game. Here it is, Procaccini. Wonderful one-handed pass. Carnino knew it was coming, just goes right up. It's like all the King Phillip defenders are expecting Procaccini to take that one to the basket. Dubro from three. Around and in. That's three for Dubro. Dubrow hasn't had many points this game, but 
That's a big basket right there. Extends the lead to 12. There's Joe Morrison with a steal there. Dubro has it. Finds Block. Block's going to drive. Goes along the baseline. Not a very good pass from Block there. He thought he could reach the cutting Dubro, but didn't get it. Davis wanted a foul, but Block will take it away. Back and forth here. Dubro, nice behind the back pass. But Lowy can't handle it at first. It'll get in, and not the strongest of uh, defensive plays there from the men down low for King Phillip. And Slowy finds his way to the basket. Foxborough has their biggest lead of the night, 14 points. Here it is. Dubro, not the most orthodox of passes. Lowy loses it, finds it again, and just goes right up. King Phillip definitely needs to make some changes. They're behind 44-30. Yeah. to 30. They've got their big men back in the game with uh, Goodwin and Lehman, but will that be enough is the question. Yeah, Foxborough definitely with a whole new sort of vigor in the second half. Just extra energy, it seems. It's been a long couple of days for them, but going strong here in this one. Must have heard what uh, we were saying over here to pick up the pace a little bit. <laughs> Here's that three-pointer from Alex. Has it. Find some room. He definitely uh, has the guts to take that. Around the rim and in. Just a nice quick release. And you see that in the NBA with the little guards having to get it off early if they want to get their shots up. And Dubrow has that mastered. 14-point lead. Foxborough, like we said, starting to pick up the pace and break away from the King Philip Warriors. Here's Goodwin. Go against Pacacini. Out to LaHoulier. Got Dubro to jump. Can't get the three, though. Pacacini almost came down with it. LaHoulier again, though. Back to him. He'll try to go inside. Will Weir gets the shot to go. King Phillips' first two points in quite a while. I should note, this is the second worst scoring team in the whole Hawk Mock League, King Phillip. They score a total of 53.2 points per game. And uh, you can see it out here. They just, they really don't have any significant scoring threats. I mean, you can't really rely on a freshman to put up right. 15, 20 points a game. It's just not gonna happen. Crazy. He, might, he might have his good games, but. Crazy deep three there from Dubrell. That would have been amazing. <laughs> but it'll be a King Philip ball going the other way. Like you were saying, King Philip, not the best scoring team, and Foxborough, one of the um, better defending teams in the league, so not a great uh, matchup for King Philip. For three, swishes that one. Ben, what is his name, Ben? Ben Smith. Senior captain. Foxborough lead narrowed down to just nine points. Procaccini now, three seconds between shot clock and game clock. He'll leave it for Dubrow. Puts on the brakes, gets the short shot to go. Foxborough fan section starting to bring some life into this game. Starting to yell and scream and cheer on their Foxborough Warriors. Foxborough's gonna try and get it going for a deep three to beat the buzzer. Not even really a deep three, just a heave. <laughs> and uh, unable to go. Very, very solid um, quarter there from the Foxborough Warriors. There was Dubrow's last basket. Gets the defenders to jump, knows where they are, and just puts it up there. Dubrow great at just making those quick cuts, especially underneath the basket, get, making the defenders keep going. And leaving him wide open for the shot. Foxborough outscoring their opponents by solid 10 points in that half, uh, quarter rather. Power coach John Gibbs, I just say more of the same. Right. Keep up that pace of play. Clearly King Phillip just can't keep up with them. Yeah, we say that Foxborough's main game plan is to keep things slow and get their chances when they get, uh, you know, when they have the opportunities. But 
Yeah, really, they're making their lead when they're going quickly. Yeah, so against almost. against Bridgewater Raynham yesterday, they they lost the second uh, the third quarter rather, 19 to six, and then they sort of picked up the pace a little bit in the fourth quarter, and they won 22 to six in the fourth quarter. It's just it's a game of runs, and I think the run starts when once the uh, intensity picks up. Block gets his defender to jump, goes in for a layup against the side uh, backboard. Gets back on defense. Few tries to get the block, finds his body instead, and that'll be a foul on Few. Coach Gibbs calling out his team's defensive matchups, making sure everyone's all situated. Will Weir at the line, it's the first to go. Well, we're equals J uh, Jake Lehman, Kyle Lehman's rather, um, scoring total for this game at 12. Lehman not doing too much so far here in the second half. He had a good run in the second quarter, but second half, not so much. Dubro has it. 7.34 left in the fourth quarter. Foxborough 46, KP 36. Timeout, Kate. Nope, not a timeout. I believe they called a five second, I don't know exactly what it's called, but I think it's a five second where you can't, one player can't have the ball for more than five seconds. Right. In a, in a stop movement, he has to dribble the ball or something. This is the Julier. Two bro all over him, he'll find Lehman. Joe Morrison gets the, uh, the block there. Lehman didn't even see him. Morrison came up from behind, held to the double team. Box was on the offensive now. Dubro goes in strong, gets the line. Here's that block. Lehman just goes along the baseline. Morrison just able to power by him. Lehman with his head down, trying to focus on the ball. Morrison just snuck up on him. Morrison, one of those guys who just Every once in a while, he'll just come out and make an unbelievable play. He won't put up the most points. He won't get the most assists or rebounds or anything, but he just makes that big play every once in a while. Another player who has been having a really good game that, well, I, I shouldn't say really good game, but a better than usual is Andrew Block. Right. Usually he, he sort of stays along the wings and occasionally makes a, makes a basket or three and plays consistent D. But uh, this game, he's become more of a presence on the offensive side of the ball. For sure. Lehman gets that one to go. Here's Alex. Go to Procaccini. It'll be a travel call. Procaccini doesn't agree with it. Seth Sullivan taking it up. Robbie Lowe is set to come into this game at the next dead ball. Jason Procaccini playing a good solid D. Ben Smith goes in to Madden there. Couldn't get his shot to go. Block will hand it off to Dubrow. He'll head to the corner. Turn, look for Block. Dangerous pass, but able to get it through. Procaccini uh, almost had it, but knocked out of bounds by Will Weird. Foxborough ball, Joe Morris will inbound it for the Warriors. Six minutes left, 10 point lead for the Foxborough Warriors, 48-38. Andrew Block has it. Dubro, Dubro thought he was gonna take the three, but instead he's gonna pass it down low to Lowy. Gets his own rebound, puts it up again, foul. He wanted that, uh, that and one if the basket fell. But uh, Ball didn't want to go in the hoop. Yeah, Lowy had to go over multiple King Philip defenders to get that first rebound, but able to do it with his long arms. Good work from the senior. Lowy, one of the more consistent free throw shooters on this basketball team. Second free throw. That extends the lead to 12. 
Foxborough really starting to uh, break away from the KP Warriors. Here's Smith. Over to Lehman. Low in coverage. Now we'll go down low to Will Weir. It's it's interesting. KP, cl they, clearly they're down and they, they need to start putting some points up, but they have most of their starters, or even scorers rather, on the bench. I don't really get the game plan here. Davis, uh, Goodwin, all on the bench. Well, we said earlier that they trust their bench, but maybe a little too much here in this situation. Here's Lehman. Go back for a deep three from Seth Sullivan. Couldn't get it to go. Almost came away with the rebound there was uh, Madden. But now Dubrow take it. 50 to 38. Five minutes left. Dubrow will take his time. 10 gonna, seconds on the shot clock. Gonna set up a play. Pick by Lowy. Nice, nice through pass by uh, Dubrow to Procaccini. Those two work well together. 10, point, uh, ten points for Procaccini on the night. You had Jason and Alex both on the way back uh, their, into their defensive zone, just smiling, knowing that that play could not have worked any better. Lane will take the three. Lowy all over him. Lane's visibly frustrated. Yeah, rightfully so. Lowy's been great on defense against him tonight. Here's Morrison and Dubrow. The foul will be against Sullivan. Doesn't agree. Didn't seem like too much contact down low, but just enough, I guess. Yeah, I don't really agree with it either. Here's Jason's basket. He just splits the defenders. Wonderful pass. Dubrow does that so often, just threading the needle between multiple defenders. Just a perfect example right there. And again, her right here finds Carnino, and he's headed to the line. Foxborough did a good job getting open down low and either coming away with layups or trips to the free throw line. Yeah, Carnino came in for Cla uh, Carnino and Clagg came in for Morrison and Block just before um, just before that. First one made. Jonathan Carnino, six points on the night. 53-38 Foxborough Warriors, four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Takes the shot, swish. Foxborough has definitely improved on the free throw shooting. If they can keep this going, I would, uh, I would say they have a good chance of making a deep, deep run in the in the uh, state tournament this year. Right, well we said that earlier this season from the beginning pretty much. They had the pieces, it was just a matter of execution. So far this season, they're looking good. Great run last season, kind of an unexpected run as uh, they were able to overcome um, big tests in the playoffs, including the undefeated Western team, which they were able to beat. Over the top pass by Procaccini to Dubro. That's the, you just can't teach that. That's it's chemistry that just comes with the game. And Clagg with a nice hustle play to get the ball, and they're going to call foul on the can, uh, KP rather defender. Yep. Wonderful, wonderful stretch of plays here by the Foxborough Warriors. And here's Alex's basket. Just a nice uh, loft pass there. It'll go up for the rebound. Clagg with great awareness there on the last one to see. Uh, his chance for the steal, as Goodwin wasn't really um, thinking too much about it. Just kind of tossed it over. Didn't expect Clagg to be there, but he was. Clagg, in, Clagg with 12, Dubrow with 11, Procaccini with 10. Scoring's been just spread out amongst all the players this game. Lamb is going to lose possession. KP just definitely... Um, I don't want to say throwing in the towel, but not with the same conviction that they had earlier in the game. Surprised Coach Gibbs hasn't got some other guys involved. He's had Dubrow in pretty much the entire game, I believe. Yeah, him and Procaccini. Uh, I, I don't think they've come out. Oh, yeah, Procaccini as well. He gets the shot to go. He's been, There's why. been hot tonight. 
Here they are, the subs. Anthony Barrera, Jermaine Few, James Blake, Mike Dunn, and Teddy Mayer. Three by Sullivan off the back rim. Brock is gonna come down with the rebound. Foxborough just getting on the run now. Wonderful block by number 24, Tom Madden. This game's sort of becoming a, uh, a run around now. Both teams just going end to end, trying to score as many points as they can. It'll be a timeout for Foxborough. Two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Foxborough has a 22-point yeah, lead as it is 60 to 38. Yep, that'll uh, that'll wrap up this game with 2:30 <laughs> left. The Foxborough subs are coming in. I wouldn't be surprised if KP throws out their subs. Wonderful, wonderful game by the Warriors. They're um. The score at halftime, not 100% sure, but I, I believe it was like 31 to 30 or something, correct? Yeah, it was close. And um, that would mean KP scored eight points in the second half. Wonderful defense. But I don't know what Coach Gibbs said during halftime, but it's worked. Definitely. As, you, as we expected, King Phillip bringing in uh, some new guys as well. KP out on the court. Will Weir, number 44, Sullivan, Tom Sullivan, he's a big boy. Number 12, Noah Goodwin, captain. And uh, number five, RJ McCarthy, senior. Number 21, J.J. Tibbetts. Mike Dunn, sophomore, one of three sophomores on this team. Barrera was trying to go up with it. It'll be a jump ball called. King Phillip will get the ball. For three. KP's gonna come down with a rebound. Um, KP's gonna inbound, in, inbound rather. Goodwin has it, he's gonna drive, kicks it out. Two points for number five, I'm McCarthy. Senior, Mike Dunn has possession of the ball. Jermaine Few now finds Teddy Mayer. Teddy Mayer goes up for the rebound, uh, basket rather, off of the underside of the hoop. 60 to 40, Foxborough with 130 left. James Blake able to keep that ball from going out of bounds. Hey. Oh, yeah, actually pushes out of bounds rather. Just to look at the road ahead for the Warriors. Uh, as you said, there you have been um, on quite a bit of a, um, or they've had quite a few games in the last few days, so they've got a little bit of a break. And then on the 5th of uh, this Friday, they will take on Milford here at home. That game will be on Foxborough Cable Access as well. And then on the 9th, they'll face Stoughton in Stoughton, followed by the 12th, where they will take on all of Rames at home. Foxborough with a couple challenges coming up, but going into it with some momentum, so they've got a solid lead here and an overall solid game against the King Philip Warriors. Yeah, going into the final stretch of games before the uh, state tournament, I'd say Fox was in a good spot to make a deep run. Uh, last year, as mo most of us probably know, they lost to Bishop Fian in the final game. And from what I understand, Bishop Fian is not as strong as they were last year. So. If that matchup does arise again, Foxborough will definitely want to win that game and should probably do it. If I recall, quite a few seniors on that Bishopian squad last year. So probably a new look on that team this year. 30 seconds left. King Phillip probably just wind up the clock here. 64-42. Foxborough Warriors, 20 seconds left. 
Sullivan goes in, just kind of throws it up there, gets to go. Six seconds remaining. Teddy will wind down the clock. And that'll finish off a nice victory for the Foxborough Warriors. 64 to 44, your final score. It was a shaky first half, but Fox were really able to dial it down in the second, build up their lead, and just take it the rest of the way. Yeah, like we said uh, before the game, and in games past, we, we keep trying to influence slowing the game down, but against teams like these, where they can just sort of blow by them, I think they need to pick up the pace, and they showed it today, and it worked. Definitely, big win for the Warriors. And of course, a big thanks to everyone making it happen behind the scenes for Fox Pro Cable Access. I'm Brady Gardner alongside Chad Burst. Thanks for watching. See ya.